Howdy folks, how y'all doing? I'm working on a constant velocity drive shaft here. Got to disassemble the CV head on it. I just want to show y'all how I do it. First thing, I take every single one of my snap rings off. All eight of them. I've got seven of them off already. I left one on to show y'all. If you look on my snap rings, Get a part, goes around, up, down, and over. The other side, it just goes up and down and stops. What I do, take my flat screwdriver, right there where it goes up and down and stop. I put it right down in there at an angle, pop it with a hammer, and it shoots right off. Like it right here. That is the quickest, easiest way there is to get a snap ring off of a U joint. Now, all my snap rings off. What I do next, I like to have the dry shaft up off the ground and on the table, concrete blocks, whatever. Have the CV head hanging, you know, off your uh, platform. The right here is called the flange yoke. Take the bottom of the flange, you lift up on it. Just kind of just hold it up even with it. Take your medium sized ball paint hammer, what I like to use. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this. These two joints will be facing up in the air. And we'll hit right here in the center of this H bracket. Alright. So. Hold up on it. And we'll hit down right here. There's only one way this can come off. There's one way it goes back together. Right now I'm just showing y'all how to disassemble it. How to check it. And then I'll do another video about how to reassemble one. But let's get started. Snap rings off. Held up. And hit. Hit. Alright. You look. Right there on my cap. See how they walked up a little bit? This one walked up farther than that one. Alright. What a good thing to have with it is a little bit of panther piss penetrating off. I like the liquid wrench myself. I can't stand that PB blaster. I was going through about a case a week of PB blaster. There's, right, there's one can right here that lasts me about two weeks, maybe three weeks in this shop now. But spray it a little bit. Soak it down real good, and then I'll flip it over. Spray a little bit down in the caps of the joint. Yeah. Remember, the other side has already started to walk out. Now I flipped it over. I'm going to start on the opposite side of it. Hold up on my flange. So they lead right here and then walked out. They walked out farther than the other side. Now, I take and I flip it back over. And it's good to have the shaft in a little trough down there. That way you can just roll it around and not chase it too much. But if you ain't got it, you know, use what you got. Hold back up on it. Whoop. One cap out. Hold up on it.
Flip her over. Look at that. It's already coming out. Now we got a flange off. Now we still got to finish getting the legs bracket off now. So flip it on over. Now we don't have a flange to hold on to. Just hold on to the ear, bottom ear. Hold on it. If it don't, sitting down there, I'm hitting, but it ain't moving. Roll it over again. As soon as you get one cap off and the other one halfway off, you can pull it right off and finish it with a punch. Alright, this one right here has been a little aggravating. We're going to spray it again. Now, once you get the cap sticking out this far, folks, if some of them will not come on out, I mean, they just won't do it. What you can do, use your vise. Grab a hold of the cap and knock it off. A good pair of vice grips, clamp on to it, hold pressure up and hit down on it. Which, if I have to end up doing this one that way, I will probably use vice grips. First, I'm going to try a bigger hammer. A bigger hammer than made her walk right on out, folks. Reading that motto, don't want to get a bigger hammer. Now, the cap ain't completely out, but it should come on out because it's sticking out more than halfway. Look at that. Now, got it that far out, or got it out, caps that far out, with a little punch, stick down in there, push it all out, Said right here, going to be a little bit harder than that than this, take there. Now, we'll disassemble. Right. Now, what we are looking for, when you take this apart, of course, you've got to change the joints. So, now we got to change the joint, but there's a little, a little tip right here that's sticking out. You want to check it real good, folks, all right? I'm going to do wipe all the grease off of her. Take a good look at it. Put your fingers around it. Make sure you don't have no uh, indentions in it, no grooves cut in it, don't want no birds on it. Well, that feels pretty doggone good right there. I think we're good right, right here. Now. This man was having a winding sound come on. And whenever I grabbed the CV head and sitting there working it around back and forth, you could hear just a real, real faint squeaking sound. Sitting here looking at these joints, right around the edges here, he's got some lines starting to come into them. And a little bit of this color, uh, Jason, right here. So, 
that tells me that these are non greasable factory U joints. So, what's happened is the grease on the inside of these joints has started breaking down on them. And started making a noise. Since when it started making the noise, it went ahead and pulled it out and brought it to me. I can rebuild it. Just replace the U joints. Replace this head. You join up there at the slip yoke, grease it up, and he's fine. If I was to have to rebuild this whole complete shaft, brand new, for me to do it, it's gonna cost you right at seven, eight hundred dollars. Man, these things are expensive. Uh, you can go to the auto parts, order one from there if you got a stock one, three to four hundred dollars. Uh, most of them are remands, kind of made. Still a decent little dry shaft. If you're just, you know, driving up and down the road a lot, you know, you ain't really going off roading. You know, you're not taking it to the hunting club every other weekend or every weekend. And during summer, you're not going fishing. If you're just driving on the highway, you know, save you about half the money, fine. That'd be, you know, good for that. You somebody like me? goes off in the woods a lot and really give that truck hell you ain't gonna want no little cheap uh, kind of made reman I can guarantee you that so no you don't bad a tit here is good let's check this right here out Little ball right here, you got some needle bearings down in it, and of course, you know, they fell out. Also, has a little spring that sits down in there. I'm not really concerned about the needles and all because I can replace them. But, that right there is what I'm looking at. It's got a lot of slack back and forth in her. You know, it should move around. Pretty simple, and this is catching, not being smooth. It's got a good bit of slack in her. So between these joints, that little ball right there, that was this man's problem. So <clears throat> now we still got a e joint right here, folks. And when you get this CV head tore apart. You just take this U joint out just like you would any other U joint. You can set it like this right here. You get a punch, drop one side down, get the cap off, flip it over, do the other side. Or you can set the ear of it up in your vise and hit right there. Don't hit on the tubing, but hit right here where the weld and the yoke is and it should walk right out oh uh, let's see which way do i want to do this one i guess i'll do it an old-fashioned way without the vice now anytime you're dealing with u joints at least Wear safety glasses. I cannot stress that enough, y'all. Wear your safety glasses. What it is, these joints, these caps, the journals here, all this is made out of like a pot metal. You hit that with your hammer, a little chip of it is going to fly off and most of the time it'll go straight through your shirt your hoodie your denim apron whatever it'll go straight through that and probably about half an inch into your skin 
Now, if it goes through all that, it will go completely through your eyeball if it hits you. That's the reason I always wear my safety glasses and whenever I'm using the punch, I always wear a face shield also. And the reason I know what all them little chips will go through is I've got two pieces still stuck into my stomach right now. One piece is about right here. And the other piece of it is right here in front. And I cannot get it out. It's too deep. I got most of it out, but I could not get the whole thing out. Look, got my glasses on, got my shield. Let's get it going out. So I just, see how I just knock that cap down? Knocking that cap down, I knock this one up. Alright. One cap down. There we go. And one more thing. Now, whenever you rebuild these down here on the CV head, you're going to want to use a non-greasable U-joint. That's what these things are designed to take. This is a non-greasable cross journal. Alright, the way it is cut and designed, it'll go right back in here, no problem. To where, a greasable you joint. See the difference in the designs of them? So this right here's got the round. No, they really don't. And there's more. You got more metal sticking out here. You got grease fitting sticking up right there. These are great if you don't have a constant velocity. Now these are hollow all the way through which means they're a lot weaker than the non-greasable. Also, the non-greasable is sealed up so good that they last three times longer than the greasable. That's why they're double the price. Now, yeah, these are $20 a piece. These are about $36 a piece. But these are rated at 20,000 miles, these are rated at 100,000 miles. So, that saying, you get what you pay for. Now, when you go try to put this in there, and get it all up in there, and it work good. But then looky right there, folks. The grease fit. Can't get to it. It can't move like it's supposed to or nothing. Now, if you absolutely have to have a grease fitting, if you just hate non-greasable U-joint, they do make a U-joint that is designed like the non-greasable. 
it's hollow and the grease fitting is right here in the center of the cap. Now them things are expensive. They are high dollar. But if you've got to have the grease fitting on it, that would be the route I would go. Well, folks, that's how you disassemble a CV head. Um, hope this was useful to you. I'm going to make another video here after lunch. You know, going back together with it. So, uh, also, you know, I'm going to be doing a little bit more uh, driveline videos here and mechanic style videos and uh, product reviews and all. So, if you haven't su subscribed to my channel, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, follow me, tell me what you want to see, and y'all be easy. Yeah, yeah.